Good afternoon, you lovely lot. Good morning for you guys across the pond and, well, elsewhere around the globe that is morning time. I hope you are well. I hope you enjoyed our first show of the day, which was, of course, Play Your Crafts Right. If you didn't see it, then this weekend is the final weekend of Crafters TV shows before Christmas, of course, going into Christmas next weekend. So we are going to be having some fun, but we're also going to be doing a lot of uh, learning and techniques when it comes to said items throughout today. Now, today within this show, you are, of course, going to be watching your starter skills. You're going to be able to find lots of things that have been featured across on our website, which is crafterscompanion.co.uk.com. EU. While you're there, we've currently got, up until the 2nd of January, our winter sale running where you're going to find a lovely selection, big selection of products that are up to 70% off. So it's worthwhile having a look at that, taking advantage of your Club Inspire as well. You can see it just coming up, up to 70% off along the bottom of your screen. But as I was saying a moment ago, this is all about starter skills. This one is going to be all about ink pads, but it's not going to be me that's going to be showing you lots of ideas and techniques it is of course going to be Corin. Hi Corin. Hello, hello. Yes, welcome back. Now, I'm just going to show you a sneaky peek. The first one we're going to look at is our um, water reactive ink pads. Now, I'm going to just I'm going to do the first one on here. We're going to show you a different way to use your ink pads to create a background and then we'll hopefully get a chance to do this one as well. Exactly the same ink pads but apply to the cardstock in a different way to create the different background, then you can pick which way you like to um, use your ink pads and create the background of your choice. So just to show you how versatile they are, because I think the ink pads we probably turn to the most are our water yeah. reactive ink pads, definitely. So Craig's agreeing with me there. Definitely. So that's where we're going to start this afternoon. Excellent. Now, even on the starter skills, you can still get your uh, comments going. Uh, we had a little bit of a friendly argument going on a moment ago because we thought it was Chloe on the comments for this show as well. She even thought it was. And as Chloe jumped on, so did Rachel. So they were both having a fight as to who was doing this show. A laughing joke. Uh, fight of course but it was it's Rachel that's on this show so good afternoon to Rachel we've got so many of you tuning in already when it comes to starter skills we've got Regina Boyd saying good morning all from a cold and snowy Buffalo New York I can imagine it's uh, cold and snowy. Sarah Brown is saying, hello, my crafty friends. It's around 1 a.m. Uh, 1 a.m. Sunday morning here in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Sending hugs to you all. Zoe Carver is saying, good afternoon, everyone. Laurie Barnett is saying, good morning, everyone. I have some projects to finish up, so I'm going to be crafting today while watching the show. We we'll love hearing that. Fred171 say good morning, everyone. Hi, Rachel. It was just about Chloe. We've got Georgianne is saying, Hi, Craig and Corin from Clearwater, Florida. Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas to you. And we've also got Cathy C on YouTube saying, Hiya, everyone. Been ages since I've managed to catch a live show. Delighted to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you here as well, as well as everyone else. So any questions, anything you want to check, just ask in the comments. Water reactive inks. We offer a wide variety of colours when it comes to our water reactive ink pads. These are just four colours that we do. Lots of things you could do that Corin is a way to show us now. Yes, as I showed you, we're going to make some backgrounds with our water reactive inks. So all I've got here is a piece of watercolour cardstock and I've just attached it with some um, with just some masking tape. I've just got some masking tape and I've just I've actually just put it on another piece of card so that I can turn it around and move it. So all I'm going to do for the first one is I'm going to take a stamping block. Now, for this, you can't use your rocker block because it's got a lip. What I need is a flat surface. You could use a cassette, you know, a DVD case, mm -hmm. CD case type thing or anything. But I'm using my stamping block. I just needed something flat and something wipeable. So all I'm going to do is, I've got, you can see here, I've got my three ones. These are really really commonly used together. Lemon tonic, fuchsia, parakeet. We use them together all the time. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply them to the platform. Just rub that on on there so we can put the first colour on. So that's my parakeet gone on first. Oh, let's try and get that a bit smoother. There we go. Then I'm going to come in with my fuchsia. Let's put that one on and put that one down here. You can see just apply. No techniques, just get the colour 
onto the block. That's what's the most important bit here. And then we'll go in with the lemon tonic again, just there, just making sure there's plenty of ink on the block. So really simple. I mean, that looks pretty. If you wanted to apply that straight to your cardstock, that would look amazing. All I've got now is I've got a little spritz bottle with some water in, and I'm just going to spritz on to there can you just see can you see it reacting straight away we just want that to react so it's up to you which way you work i'm just going to find it easier to work with it in a landscape um transition just for a minute so all i'm going to do is turn it over and then i'm going to drop it down and i'm going to try and center it up just within that side that masking tape and look at that there we go we can pop that on to there now it depending on how wet you've got it is how much those colors will blend i'm just pressing that all down and then i can oh i can feel can you see that suction coming up nice. wow, wow look at that then what you can do if you want it um, a little bit more you can spritz across there and then the colors will blend can you see how they're blending you if we, can. Oh, don't spray me spray the card i turned it wrong can you see there? You can see the colours are just starting to flow. Absolutely, can make the most amazing background. So what we need to do now is we can then we can then um, dry it off a little bit, okay. just to so that we can work with that. So you can there, you can see it moving around. If you wanted to, you can just let those colours just start to run just a little bit to mix them around so you've not got such a harsh line. And if they do run, you're gonna create new colors. You can see where the blue is going into the pink, and let's just dry that off. Get that nice and dry. If you wanted to, you can always blot it a little bit if you need to get, let me just get a little bit more of that off so it dries a bit quicker. There we go. So now we've created our gorgeous, gorgeous background that's worked like that and then and that's more or less dry what you can do there's all sorts you could do with that i could stamp onto that i can die cut into that i could use it as background okay. on my flowers however you wanted to what i'm going to do is i'm going to lift that up let's just i'm going to keep it i'm going to keep it on the background for a minute because it's going to help me keep it tidy let's just trim i'm just trimming it down so it fits on my stamping platform there we go that perfect I'll press it down let's go that way up and you can see we can pop this on here now i don't want to go over it with another water reactive ink pad so i'm going to go over it with my waterproof and if you're at all unsure about the properties of our waterproof ink pads then go and have a look at um, some of our previous shows because we'll show you how that works oh just get this off here then i've just got one of my resist stamps pop that over the top again keeping it within that line lift that up and then put plenty of stuff now i'm using a waterproof ink pad just in case there's any moisture left on there we don't want there to be any moisture just very quickly pop that onto there press that down oops and then stamp on to there really quick and then wow. look at that peel off the line and then oh can you see peel off the tape add on a faux border that is the perfect background for a card that is absolutely beautiful. You can do, of course, what Corinne's just done. You can then go in and do other backgrounds. You can go lighter. Remember, these are just a small selection of the water reactive ink pad colors that we do. Never have I thought about using my old stamping blocks or that, Corin, to um, go and create back. You know, for me, I always automatically think of my glass mat or, of course, my craft mat. But by using the actual acrylic block shape, or as you said, an old CD case or cassette case, if you've still got anything like that, but use those surfaces to create backgrounds with. 
a, there's a lot of stuff in our craft in our craft room that we can actually use to create our backgrounds so you know that was just one way but I mean look at when you've put that together how you know how the black on top of that background looks just by drawing in a faux border but you can can't you see the benefit there you of can. having that masking tape around the outside to give me that gorgeous neat line as well looks gorgeous such a pretty effect so effective yeah it really is yeah because trying to do that onto your glass mat within a certain area it's doable but you're just having to kind of yeah. line up way up you're trying to mask out when it comes to the area that you want so it's a great way of using your old uh, acrylic blocks if you've got them yes. spare Yep. Really handy. Should I show you how to do that other background? Let's using do it. exactly the same ink pads. I'm just masking this up. I don't I don't spend ages masking. I don't want okay. you know, you can mark it and get it. I just think as long as it's roughly, so I'm just literally line up, I can see roughly where I want, and then we're just doing this. Now, this is masking on this one is quite important because what you'll see we're going to do is we're going to blend the backgrounds so i'm still staying with exactly the same ink pads okay. and we did do something a bit like this earlier so you come in with your um parakeet and we can then just come in first and just blend on a bit don't worry about the um it being you know a bit harsh to begin with because okay. by the time you've finished it will all blend together yeah. so we've got the fuchsia and we can bring that in we could we always go over them again at the end and just bring those colors but these are these are our staple colors aren't they, really they? these are, are the colors they? that we all work to so much so i'm just using my blending tools and as we said earlier everybody has different ways to apply mm -hmm. their inks you might do it with daubers like this you might do it with blending brushes you know you work with whatever works for you and you're going to get a different effect now can you see i'm going up to and over the um masking tape okay not you know just blending it together and then we can just um, just put those in and blend those colours together. Oh, let's go in with a little bit, a little bit of blue in here. Just blend those together. That blue is quite strong, so I'm going to try not to overpower with that blue. But it just, works though, doesn't it? Against it, that yeah. subtleness of the the. Well, when I say subtle, I know the the fuchsia in the honey pot is quite a strong one, but it's subtle compared to the parakeet. But it does work. Yeah, it really does, isn't it? This is lemon tonic, not honey pot. Honey uh, pot's a little tonic. bit, little Sorry, bit yeah. stronger, isn't it? I think. Lem Do you know what just, it was? It's because the one I showed was honey pot. Yes. Lemon tonic. Yeah. No, just so people, in case they're looking Definitely, for them. Definitely, yeah. But no. you can see how I don't mind that the colours mixed together so we can just leave it like that if you want oh, let me just that one looks a little bit pale just there let's blend that oh, yeah i'll do that oh let's finish there yeah. no no, no do, a bit, i think we'll do that don't yeah. we yeah exactly so we're going to do just like we did before and we're going to come in with the water now you can spritz onto it or you can do like i do and i just to get bigger droplets i squirt it onto my hand mm. and then let that drop down because i just find you get slightly bigger droplets now what you're waiting for is the um, water to to draw out that ink so the longer you leave the water on the more of a bleach faux bleach okay. effect you're going to get if you leave it on for like two seconds you're going to get a very mild one leave it on for like 30 seconds and you can you can see it's it's getting paler and paler it behind is. there yeah, you, can. you can stop it at any point just with a piece of a kitchen towel there we go and then you can see look at that straight away doesn't that look awesome awesome really great so then we just dry it off because what we want to do we want to just make sure it's lovely and dry and you can just keep going in and you can add little little bit more if you mm -hmm. want to just remember you can always add a bit more you can't take it That's away it, yeah so what i would say is if you want to um you know just to just do a little bit of water and then you know do a little bit more and then a little bit more so we're going to do exactly like we did before bring it in pop it onto our stamping platform um, i'm using a stamping platform because these are big stamps so it's easier so i'm going to go in with the butterflies this time so again these are resist stamps and i just like these because i like the size of them i like i haven't got to think about are all the butterflies going to fit no. i know all of those will fit perfect we can pick that up and again we're going to go in 
with our waterproof ink pad just because then we know if there's any moisture left in there I'll just stamp it once now if I was at home I'd probably stamp this a couple of times which is another yeah, benefit yeah. from having my stamping platform make sure it's nicely covered in ink and then we can stamp that onto there pop that one just on here press nice and firm making sure I've not missed any bits and you notice I've put it onto my stamping mat that, as well yeah. I just find that sometimes I get a better finish but look at Love that Love it. wow it looks amazing and then watch this when you just peel off Ooh. doesn't that white border really finish it so off satisfying there we go look at that isn't that beautifully and then again a different type of faux stitch oh wow just a squiggly faux stitch i think that finishes one of those strip sentiments yes your card done that is your card done mm -hmm. beautiful we've got uh, something coming up in the next few weeks that would work very well as to what corin just described there vellum and sentiments We've got Rebecca saying, good morning all. Decided to start my birthday by watching Crafters TV. Oh, happy, birthday. happy birthday to you. What a fun day you're going to be having. And all these different techniques that you're seeing. So many have already said things like, as to what Laurie's saying, water reactive ink pads are so awesome. Cathy C is saying, the water reactives are my favourite. They're the first ink pads I bought simply to do all the different techniques. Absolutely. Charlotte Clark on YouTube saying very pretty background. Rebecca Hawkins on YouTube. Those colours are looking pretty together. They are, cannot agree with what Corin says. These three are the three that we use time and time again because we all love them. We've got Regina Boyd on YouTube saying, I love these backgrounds. I have a couple of birthday cards to make. I'm going to use this concept. We've also got Carolyn on YouTube saying, haven't caught a live for the first time. Sorry, caught alive for the first time. I'm so excited. Welcome, Caroline, to, of course, Crafters TV, seeing us live. Um, we've got a couple of questions that I'll put to Corinne just shortly, but we are going to move on to another set of ink pads. Quick dry ink pads. So when it comes to our quick dry, we offer a wide variety of colours in the quick dries. These are just four of some of what we have, different things that Corin's away to show us what we can do. I certainly am. Right, now, I have got my multi-layered, um, oh, do it that way, sorry, my multi-layered happy birthday to you stamp. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to stamp multiple layers on here. Now, if you use a regular stamp, there, uh, ink pad, sorry, then your colours might smudge slightly. So what you've got here is you've got your shadow, you've got your elongated sentiment, and then you have your die that fits over the top. So I have got a couple of my quick dry um, ink pads. Now, you'll find that when you look at your quick dry ink pads you'll often see they pair up really well you've got a light pink and yeah. a dark pink you've got a light purple and a dark purple and the same with the blues so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our stamping platform again we're going to pop our card stock down and i'm going to just pop my um, magnets right to the end i moved one of those and then i'm going to start on here with my first um uh, sentiment um, stamp okay. so I'm going to pop this onto here now there are little corners on here that are going to help you but I actually just line mine up um, and just do it that way by eye so what you can do is you can put those onto here and then you can just do a little drop you can get your little your black liner and you can actually just line that up there and that shows you where the next one goes but I'll just do mine by eye so once I've done that I'm going to come in there first with my first colour now my first colour is going to be my palest colour, obviously, because we're going to stamp over it. So I'm going to come on here with my pale fig and that one's going to just go all over. Now these are really, they feel really sticky. It, it feels like a really, um, they don't, you don't think they're going to be quick dry because they are a really juicy 
uh, ink pad and you think well these won't dry quickly but they do so I can pop that down I can stamp and I can see that's gone straight on there you can see straight on there can you see the little dots you can I can see the color and I can put that on there look now no smudge absolutely no smudge it is so quick to dry are these so I can come on with the next one now as I showed you I can use that little mark I put on there but I actually find it easier or I get a more accurate result just to line that up there that's that's my preferred mm -hmm. way of doing it if you want to you know use the little mark then use the little mark so then I'm going to come in with my light my darker color because we've now got as you can see less stamped area there so we're going to come in all over with our purple which is our crushed velvet and you can see that's covered nicely again look at that the ink pads are just look at that so juicy and it just feels like a contradiction in terms but I promise you it won't and they won't they don't blend together so you can put as many colors on and you know you're going to get the true color and that's what's most important so look at that now can you see how clever is that now what I've actually done here is I have stamped, I have a cut out rather, die cut out the sentiment and I've just popped it through my little sticker maker to make it all sticky on the back so that we can then, oh, it's very sticky, is this one? And then we can take that off of there, just get that off. And that, oh, if I can find the right way round, oop, stuck to me. And that will then create my third layer over the top you could go do that in white or a you know a shade of your purple so we can just you have to excuse this because it's stuck to me there we go and look at that that now fits perfectly over the top of there so we can just layer that one there we go look at that perfectly over there so that is our birthday and all we would then do is bring in a card base I've just done a really simple stepper card and I'm going to pop that one on to first we can then have to put some foam pads on the back to lift it up a little bit of simple matting and layering I've got my happy birthday on here so you get all of the extra stamps happy birthday to you just down here we can pop that I love a little um, dragonfly, so we can pop that onto here. Just a bit, oh, glue's gone crispy under the lights. We can pop that on to there. And then finally, a little bow on the corner. And that would be how I would use my quick dry inks to create something as effective as that absolutely stunning but then you can start to use them for background you can start to use them for detail that is your quick dry just some of the colors that we offer in our quick dry range there we go quick dry the really i cannot express just exactly what corn said as well you you think that they are not going to dry Corin. you think that you go over it they're going to smear they're going to smudge because they're so juicy they but are it's it's they are a, they are an unusual um ink pad because they look so juicy they look so moist and you they think do. they if i compared that with my water reactive which is like a, a fabric to, um ink pad to my spongy one you think well there is more ink on there but it just, the reaction with the ink, with the paper, means that it just dries instantly. And as you saw when I prepared this one, you could see that it didn't matter. There was no bleeding of colour. The lines are perfectly crisp. You're not having to worry about bleeding nope. or smudging. So it doesn't matter what colour you were layering on top of there, you're going to get that perfect clarity every single time. You absolutely are. So, yeah, absolutely love the quick dry for doing exactly things like that or even little sentiments. Uh, I've got a couple of questions. Um, Chrissy, I can tell you, uh, hang fire within this show, we are going to be having a look at the uh, opaque pigment ink pads. 
just shortly. Uh, Corin, Laura Parker on YouTube had said, so this was the first demo that you'd done with Water Reactive. What was the stamp that you used? The butterflies. The butterflies? Ah, let me find it. I've just put them down. So they are here. So it was out of our resist um, set of stamps. Okay. So it's the Delightful Butterflies. So if you put Delightful Butterflies into our website, it'll come out. And it's a solid stamp. You know, it's all one stamp. Um, and like I say, they are they are officially called from our resist um, range. But what I like to show you is you can do so much more yeah. with them than just one technique. You absolutely can do, can't yeah. you? And then last one for now, Rebecca Hawkins on YouTube had saying, Corinne, yep. what type of tape was that that you used for uh, the edges? Masking tape. Just masking tape. Or oh, that's a really, really, it's just one that I've had in my craft bag for years. But if you, um, if you have any washi tape, that also works because that's quite a low tack as well yes. so washi tape or masking tape it's entirely up to you if you find your washi your masking tape's a little bit too sticky just um detack it on your clothes just detack it on your trouser leg yeah. um before you go and it'll be perfect excellent last comment for now laurie on facebook is saying the quick dry ink pads are magical i love stamping sentiments with them because they also stamp fine lines beautifully and thick lines really solidly Finesse ink pads. We have got our Fina, Finesse alcohol proof ink pads. We've got Noir Black, we've got Flagstone, we have got Rustic Brown and we've got Pebble. Corin, what can we do with these? Right, I'm going to I'm going to use the Noir Black just because it's one that I really, really like to use. Now we don't have to say to you this is a water-based ink pad and then you can use it with your alcohol pens because opposites attract don't worry about all of that it says on here it's alcohol proof dye that means i can then go in with my alcohol pens and know that it's not going to degrade the color at all which is what i love now as well as having the alcohol proof um, ink pad we also have our alcohol cardstock you can see on here i've written nina Often, when I start cutting into my cardstock, I'll write on the piece that's left behind what it is. I now can just, I can tell Nina cardstock now from other cardstocks. Um, you learn it quite quickly. So, you know, it, it feels slightly different. But this is an um, alcohol car, um, cardstock, so it's absolutely perfect for um, using your alcohol proof um, ink and also your... Um, alcohol pens so all I'm going to do on here obviously if I was at home I'd be a bit more careful with my um what am I doing I don't know why I was trying to do that right as we were where I was going to stamp so I'm going to load up my stamp with my alcohol proof um ink so it's up to you whether you can use the stamping platform or the rocker block you use what works best for you don't worry about the ink that's gone onto the edge it's not going to matter because this platform um, grasp you know does it at the right layer level so what you what you've got on here is I can see straight away that my stamp has stamped perfectly and look at that your alcohol proof um, ink stamps really really clean and crisp so we can take that out and then straight away I don't need to wait for it to dry I don't have to you know wait to, um, let it um, set i can then come straight in with my alcohol pens and i can start to color and look at that there is no um smudging there's no bleeding i'm coming straight in actually i should have put that over we always talk about putting a piece of card underneath and i didn't do that straight away because i wanted to show you but i wasn't doing too much blending so i can come in here just bringing in those colors and even if i then start to do my blending look at that ink it hasn't budged it hasn't smudged it re it holds its form absolutely perfect and there's a lot of ink on here because i'm blending my colors um, up and every time i know it's going to be perfect so we can take that now the great thing about what i love about this um stamp set is you get a matching die to go with it so you don't need to worry about cutting it out and then you can colour all of these bits in but look can you see how even on that pale lilac I haven't had to worry about it um, 
bleeding or smudging. Once you've got it coloured, cut it out with your die and this is what you get. And isn't that absolutely beautiful? So when I was putting together a card, of course I had to use my Wisteria cardstock my wisteria stamp and again still stamped with my alcohol um, alcohol proof uh, ink pads because then I'm you know you're going to get that clarity um, you know it's going to work even if I'm not doing any techniques it tends to be the ink pad I turn to time and time again I've cut out my lovely little window I've just gone over it with some gilding wax to make it look beautiful and then I'm going to come in here and I can then just be adding in my gorgeous gorgeous hydrangeas um, wisterias even that I have coloured with my pens blending those all the way and we can just pop them on here and we can just come all the way down should we do no let's keep going down there and then we can even go in oops that didn't catch but never mind it'll do there we are let's come to let's just bring that to one side a little bit so the door opened and how about like that now if i didn't have an alcohol proof ink pad i wouldn't get those perfect results you know being able to do what Corn's done, but then look at the fine detail you can get as well. Then you can go and you can create full designs. That is from, of course, our alcohol proof. We do the three that you can see here. We've got, in actual fact, I know it's just along the same lines as what Corn's done, but with the Wisteria collection, you can see here, even the actual intricacy of the sentiment that stamps out when you use your alcohol proof, but even using the stamp and just creating it as a top pattern along the card, it works really, really well. So yes, it's great for your colouring with your alcohol pens, but then, you know, you still find we use it quite a lot just for black detail, whether it is a stamp. You know, this is where you can then tone it down slightly if you want to and go down to the flagstone. But if you're going more of the rustic and the browns and the naturals, you might want to go for the rustic brown or the pebble. But they do all exactly the same as what Corin just done there with the alcohol pen when it comes to the colouring. So, a uh, lot you love and seeing what Corn's been doing so far with all these different ones. Let's have uh, a little look. So, there was uh, another question uh, about the tape that Corn had used. So, we covered that a wee moment ago. Um, Rachel B, I'll uh, ask Corin this question just here. It's actually referring back to a demo that you've done this morning. It is, Rachel B is saying, if I am embossing, as in heat embossing, mm -hmm. if I am embossing a dye, like in the demo you've done this morning, with clear embossing powder, mm -hmm. what colour ink pads should I use? You can use whatever colour yeah. you want, but they must be pigment based. I think it's the type rather than the colour. You can use whatever colour. And we're actually going to do some of that in a minute with our opaque pigment ones. We're going to use a jet black and the plum jam. So it's not about the colour, it's about the type. So you want ones that say embossing on there like that. And, you can, and why we're going to use those is because they stay um, wet for a lot longer so that we can then um, heat emboss them. Yeah, so absolutely. Just reiterate what Con just said there. It could be any question whatsoever don't forget anything that uh, you've seen corn been using whether it's maybe little tools we're not necessarily talking about as well across on our website crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu that's where you can go and have a little peruse at your own leisure rightio pigment ink pads we have got a variety of colors when it comes to our pigment ink pads that you can see here. Lots of things that you can do, one of which corns away to show us right now. 
Okay, so what I wanted to show you is you can create background with your water reactive ink pads and then you can use a different ink pad on the top. And because your water reactive ink pad doesn't stay moist, it won't pick up your embossing powder. So what I would be to what I would do is I would get my water reactive ink pad and I would start creating a background. So I'm going to come in here with some yellow just on here. And you can see straight away, if I touch it, it's not picking up on my hand. So it's nice and dry. And you'll see the relevance of that in a minute. We're going to come in with our pink and then we're going to come round the edge. Oops with that I've just masked this off again like I did with the other one because I like the effect of that white border around so it's just choice you can go right up to the edge of your cardstock or if you've got a good eye you could um, just do it yourself you know what I mean color up to wherever you do so I'm going to come right to the edge just along here and do like this so we can come all the way over like that now, I'm not going to have time to do the whole of this background, but what I would be doing here is blending this one and then blending it with a little bit of my darker pink all up just to give the edge a little bit of um, a hit. Come in with my yellow and just blend that out. You'll see why we're going to do that in a minute. And then I want a little bit of my paler pink. Now, don't worry. It's not about spending ages and ages and getting these perfect because what I would then do is take this I've oh, just dropped a dauber and then I would come over the top of that and I would ink through here so you can see we are really applying lots of ink to this but I don't need to worry um, that my embossing powder is going to stick to it so you can see on here just bringing oops that one in just round there but look at that for a background how lovely does that look really really pretty so that is perfectly dry I could put my embossing powder on there and it wouldn't stick so what I want to do is I've actually got one here that I've got ready and I'm just going to pop that on to here now there is nothing on there that's going to st um, stick to so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just give it a quick wipe you see nothing comes off just to make sure there's no static on there. And then I'm going to add my stamp. So this is my Blooming Heart. And again, this is a sort of a resist stamp. And what I would do here is I would pop this on to there, just like that, and pick this up. And what we're going to do is, let me just drop that down a little bit. Pop that on. Oh, it's sticking there. And I'm going to come in with my opaque pigment in my jet black. Oh, this one was a new one and I forgot to take the, the wrapper off. There you go. You can see this will be lovely and juicy. Now, as we said, the molecules in a pigment ink pad are larger. So they, um, they, they, they're in a, a thicker carrier. So the ink, you know, is thicker. The carrier in there is absolutely perfect for keeping this... Um, wet for longer so you can see how perfectly it's covered on there so when i press this down i am then going to get the perfect finish there we go i love this so on the black the black on the pink looks amazing oh look at that doesn't that look Incredible. lovely Incredible. so that is a damp ink now i'm not going to take ages and ages because it has got its limits but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and sprinkle on my um, embossing powder. Take off the excess. Now, can you see my black has now gone grey, but there is no embossing powder anywhere else. So all we're going to do then is we're going to heat that up. Just let that just start to get uh, nice and warm. And, you can, and when you see this, watch this, watch the black. Watch the black turn, less getting that warm, just warming that all the way up. And then I can see it. Just look at that. Look at that. Can you see that? You can see that, there yeah. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. And can you see the background isn't shiny because the embossing powder has not stuck to any of that background at all. It has just stuck to my pigment ink pad. 
So once I've done that, all I would do is, oops, there we go. I'll show you this one that I finished. With my pigment ink pad, I've just stamped in the gorgeous plum jam, mounted it onto some black card, perfect for a card front. Absolutely gorgeous. Talking of gorgeous, you can do all these triple resists. You can still go in and add pigment detail. That's all been done by a small selection I've got here of our pigment ink pads that you'll find from Crafter's Companion. So versatile when it comes to the pigment because they're nice and they're juicy. Couple of questions. What I'll do is I'll wait until um, a, a little wee while and we'll ask them all together. So if you do have any questions that you want to then carry on from anything Corin's been showing you with the ink pads, uh, do let Rachel know and then we can fire them across to Corin before the end of the show. Maybe you've seen something that Corin just done a moment ago or throughout the show, or maybe on play or crafts like crafts right earlier get your teeth in Craig because if we look at this one here this is the one that Corn was referring to within player crafts right where so he's gone in with the pigment blended them together clear embossing powder as soon as it's melted another layer of clear embossing as soon as it's melted another one up to four or five times you get that incredible bubble effect it looks as though it is glossy highlights that have then been dried, but then you're getting them within that clear embossing. A couple of questions we had always say, uh, or often get asked, do we have our own clear embossing powder? We don't have uh, initially our own one. Do check out our website because we do do a range of creative expression powders where you can have a look across there. All these, you'll still get your benefits when it comes to Club Inspire, of course, but have a little look there. See what you can maybe stock up on. Maybe you've never kind of ventured down to pigment or quick dry or water reactive. So I keep mentioning throughout the show as well, you can just go across to our website. You'll find a variety of things Corn's been using as well as talking about cross on the website for you to check out. Maybe it's going to be the start of a, uh, a, new, a new year, not necessarily a new craft, but maybe a new tool, maybe a new technique is something that you're going to be starting with. So uh, really, really nice to see a few of the questions coming in. So do keep them coming in before the end of the show. We will uh, ask them, of course. But we do have got, um, where was that one I did just want to read out there? Bernie on YouTube is saying, thank you for doing this show. I am learning so much. That's what we want to do with the weekends, isn't it, Corinne? It is certainly being able is. To learn. It's all about coming back and doing techniques. I mean, trying to put them into um, some sort of um, finished sample where I can, but it's about the techniques. It's making you look at what craft products you've already got and really making the most of them and showing you different ways to use them. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, yeah, keep them coming in. Our Midas ink pads. We've got four colours from a variety of colours when it comes to our Midas metallic ink pads. Corin, what can we do with these? Right, now, these are another pigment ink pad and we've not looked at these at all today. We've got, I've got three here. I've got my gold, I've got my blush and I've got my rose satin. Now, I love these and Midas ink pads, so you can stamp with them and they are so crisp and clear. You can emboss like we were showing you with the heat emboss because they last a little bit, you know, Stay moist a bit longer but all of your pigment ink pads are good for blending as well and we've not really talked about that so what I've got here is I've got my heavenly hellebore 3d embossing folder I love this such a such a strong image and I'm just going to put some regular black card inside there now this is a 3d embossing folder so I'm going to put it onto the cutting plate I'm going to pop my magnetic shim on the top of there and then I'm going to go in with my clear um, cutting pl um, plastic shim my plastic shim we don't need our second cutting plate because it's too deep you, you would break, you, you, you ruin your machine, break your machine by putting too much pressure in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and that now you can see has embossed, look how, oh, right now, 
this is what's so clever you can see that emboss on there but i'm going to make it pop even more but before i do that i've got a little circle and i'm going to pop that on to the center and i'm going to emboss again i'm just picking out now you don't when you get an embossing folder you don't have to use the whole of the embossing folder and i love techniques where we just pick out elements to you so i'm going to emboss that through as well but remember always die cut before you emboss so that's why i've cut the circle out first rather than taking that and then die cutting because all i would be doing then is um flattening well i'd be flattening the emboss that i've already done now look at that so that now fits perfectly oh there look it's just slotted into place there we go we can see on there now what i'm going to do is i'm going to really make this come to life so look at this really gorgeous juicy ink pad you can see all of that and i'm just going to then blend on here now look at how this emboss comes to life so you can blend beautifully and the midas ink pads look amazing on your dark cardstock it's going to look lovely on your paler colors but look at the in the depth and intensity of color now you remember that um that embossed you couldn't see that well because it was embossed on black but look at it now look at how uh rich it looks look at the depth it is absolutely gorgeous so i can take the gold then i'm going to take my blush and i'm just going to come round here on the this oh i'm going to do that on the center i'm going to just emboss there look at that look at how that comes to God, life and that looks just phenomenal there. it does doesn't it and then the final one i'm going to get is my rose satin and i'm just going to take that and come all the way around the outside because remember you can blend with these perfectly so what you want might want to do is then just come back in with your gold we can just mix and match the two colours together because they are perfect for blending as well uh, you know all your other techniques I'm just coming in with my gold one so once you've got it to there all I would do is I'd map that one that one just onto some silver and then I would take my card base let me just wipe that up so that I don't get it all over my card just simple card base really simple gold and then some of our Centura pearl I'm then going to take some wet glue wet glue is better because I can get into all the nooks and crannies and then I can work out which way round this goes I think it goes that way up that's just my personal choice I can put that on to there then I'm going to take this one which I've put very fine um, tape on the back and I can just take off the tape off the back of there just to give it a little bit of a lift if you struggle to line up just put a little bit of wet glue on just so that it can um, give you a chance you can see exactly where it needs to line up then all I'm going to do is add a sentiment across the bottom balance it up across the top with a bow and I think that is a stunning card and it's made even more special with those ink pads really really has but then you can do heat embossing with them as well you can see you can create backgrounds that is your midas metallic ink pad just a small selection of colors that we do Hugh, you're actually saying that um, you've got some of the Midas ink pads, but I've not actually used them. Do you know something? To be completely honest with you, Corinne, I don't use them anywhere near the amount that I should really use them. I don't think any of us do. I think, no. As we said earlier, our water reactive ink pads are our go-to ink pads. So we use them time and time again and forget about everything else on the, on the shelf. I mean, on Friday, this week, come in, Friday, uh -huh. yeah. You and I, we've got craft along. We do. Shimmer ink pads. So I'm going to show you some lovely techniques with your shimmer ink pads, which we're not going to have time to cover no. today. So there are so many ink pads out there. But I love like this technique because it almost looks like a spotlight on yeah, the centre, does, doesn't, doesn't it? it? It makes you really focus in on that centre. But having that gorgeous gilding all the way around by using your Midas Phenomenal. ink pads, really they are is. so, so versatile. And, and we just 
get into one technique and yeah. forget that there are other techniques out there. I think maybe what it is is crafters, if you've been crafting for a while, are there metallic ink pads out there in the market and I'm not going to knock them because a lot of them are really really good but there's a lot of them you can't stamp your sentiments with you can't blend yeah. with yeah. you know you can't heat emboss with you can't letter press technique you can't do all these things in a one or you know it's like different gold metallic ink pads for different jobs whereas you've just seen in that little demo that Con just done yeah. there you can do a variety of different yeah. things. I've heat embossed the sentiment we haven't got time to do that today but I've heat embossed there but look at how clear it stamps so I said about the pig the molecules being bigger but they're still fine enough that you're going to get a crisp stamp and I think that's what some people struggle with is the crispness with yes. which they stamp but these will stamp absolutely beautifully they will blend and they will heat emboss so they're yeah. so multi so multi use they really are and if I actually go back to this one here that's gorgeous that is what we've got here is the sentiment's been stamped yeah. This embossed background has been letter pressed. Ah, so this is right. this is uh, all the same uh, Midas metallic ink pad, the gold. Yeah. Then the stag, that's been die cut and then that's been coated within the ink pad and then heat embossed. Like we were doing like earlier. Like we were doing earlier yeah. on. So that's got clear heat emboss. So there's just an, an additional That's few almost techniques. like a faux stamp, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't stamp onto that background because it's textured. That's it. So you couldn't, but that almost looks like you've stamped with a like a resist stamp. Yeah. So it's amazing how you can create faux embellishments that's or faux right. looks mm -hmm. by using your product in a different way so yeah absolutely brilliant what, what I would actually say if you are new to us and you've just joined us recently or you've joined us since we've started our new schedule at the weekend and we've got master classes every single show master classes starter skills etc etc every single show that we do here it always stays across on our YouTube channel which is of course crafters TV so what I would do is you can of course create your playlist I would keep and create a playlist of this show. And then as Corin said, it's me and her that's back together again on Friday. And then when she features the Shimmer Ink Pads craft along, I would add that one to your playlist. And then you've got all of your ink pads that have all been covered. I would even cover and do the earlier show today, play your crafts right, because then Corin covered the waterproof ink pad. So there you are, in three separate playlists, you've got all your ink pads that have been covered and been able to see the different ways, which is a really good way of doing them, of course. We've got, uh, Carolyn, saying such a great uh, review and tips, new ideas and some we've forgotten about, 100%. Couldn't agree with you more. Rosalind on Facebook saying, once you buff them a little, it gives you a little shine. Oh, yeah. Can do that as well. It really, really does. It'd be worthwhile doing that. We have then got Ro uh, Rosalind also is saying, Cora, and you just give me an idea oh, for good. my edge embossing folders on a scrapbook page. Perfect. There you go. <gasps> yeah, that, these colours, my ink pads, yeah. on the edge of a scrapbook page. Yeah. That would look really good. Really, really good. Mary Beth is saying, I never tire watching heat embossing, which Corn done earlier on. But we do have a few questions. So if you're okay, Corn, I'll fire them across to you. Myra Scott on YouTube been saying, what's the difference between resist stamps and normal stamps? There, there isn't actually any different no. in the composition of the stamp. Let me see if I can find my resist stamps. I've, I've literally, because I was going so fast, I was throwing things down here. So these were a resist we called these a resist stamp because when Leanne was working with our product development team to develop them, how she sort of looked at it is you could maybe stamp them with your white and white ink and um, heat emboss them and then you could create your backgrounds over the top. I've just turned it on its head and I've created my background first and then I've stamped over the top. So it's just that they are large stamps. When I say they're resist, that was the collection that they came from, our, our resist stamp collection. Mm -hmm. So it's just a large stamp where everything is contained. So, I mean, on different collections, you might get that leaf as one, you might get that flower as another stamp, and then you'd build up that background. Yeah. What we're doing with these on here is we're giving it all in one. And the same with that book butterfly instead of giving you all the different butterflies that you could then um, layer up in different configurations yourself we're giving you as a sheet it's a it's a lot quicker mm -hmm. um, 
if, if you want to create cards like that, you know, if you wanted to then fussy cut each one out individually, go for it. That's entirely up to you. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, but we're giving you... They were just from a collection called Resist Stamps. Yes, yeah. But they're good for as well. Because a lot of the designs have got more open lines, what you can then do is kind of cover what Con done earlier on. You can stamp with your translucent clear ink pad or your pigment ink pads, put over clear embossing powder, melt them, then go over with your water reactive inks, and then they resist the mm. image. But then, as you were showing, you can then chop and change, yep. use them as normal stamps. What Corin's been doing with the resist stamps, you can absolutely do with any of your other stamps. Absolutely. But as uh, Corin said there, you know, it was the name of the range of the collection. We've that used came out. six different ink pads today. So we've used waterproof ink, mm -hmm. just to show you on that. Let me bring that in. Waterproof ink to show you how you can add your mediums. We've used alcohol proof just to show you if that's your medium that you're going to use. We've used our quick dry, so if you want to do layering, you can do it like that. We've used our water reactive to create some gorgeous backgrounds. We've used our pigment inks to heat emboss yeah. there. And we've used our Midas inks to create a gorgeous blended background. That is the range. I mean, we used the one on the card where we did the um, heat embossing mm -hmm. on that, but mm -hmm. that was about the flowers, actually. But those are the far six different ink pads that we have covered today, just in just over an hour. So yeah. I'm going for a lie down in a darkened room in a minute. You, you, you know, yeah, all yeah, you of those it. different ways to use your ink pads. There isn't one there that's the same. No, They're not all, all different, different techniques. Yeah. And then, in actual fact, if we go back to the Midas ink pad, because I was yeah. away to answer or read out Sandra's that question. Yeah. That's it, yeah. And then what I showed you as well, but the techniques you showed, Corinne. So Sandra's initial question was, I have the metallic ink pads, but I never, all I ever see you do is stamping the words or the sentiment. Can you show other ideas? Then she's come back and saying, thank you for showing us how to use the metallic stamp pads. I've had them for so long. I even considered tossing them. Oh no, never, Don't do never, that. no. No, this is what these these shows are all about. Mm -hmm. Is doing. I tell you what else. If you did something like this technique we did here, where Ooh, we nice. die cut out a sentiment and then use different um, embossing uh, of the Midas pads mm -hmm. going through the grey set and then heat emboss that, that would look amazing. You know, across your card would look beautiful. Oh, I've lost my really sentiment. Would. I think it's stuck to me. It's Falling gone off. It's Falling gone off. But yeah, is. all those different things as yep. you just said there, you know, it works an absolute treat there. So you can absolutely combine a lot of them together, but they all have their own individual purposes. Um, but as I say, you can combine them, of course. Um, so, so, so glad that so many you absolutely love not only this starter skills show when it comes to the ink pads, but of course the shows in general where we really just take a step back. I mean, last week we've had our scoreboards for so, so many years. And with uh, myself on Corn side and Debbie Fisher was on this side, it was lovely for me just to be like, do you know something? I forgot how versatile even like our scoreboards are or our envelope makers and that. And even throughout the week, I've been using them a lot more at home when I've been doing preps because they really are handy. And it's nice to show you the basics in a shorter period of time, which then you can go off in your own creative direction or Type them in uh, YouTube and you'll find them popping up on past shows that we've done. But it's been really nice just to focus on these ones.